So we have a graph of some function here. And let's go ahead and take a look at this. So for part A, it says, how far was the airplane, airplane from the airport at 1 p.m. and at 2 p.m.? So at 1 p.m., it looks like we were approximately, we'll say, 250 miles. So we have time versus distance. So this is 250 miles. And at 2 p.m., it looks like we were 400 miles. Okay. Now, how fast was the distance changing? Well, the change in distance over some unit of time, that's what we call speed or velocity. So at 1 p.m., the question is, is how fast were we moving? Well, that's the slope of the tangent line. So the question is, what is the slope of this line? Okay, well, the best way to do it is to try to get a grasp on two points here. So we'll take maybe this one and this one and this one. Looks like, eh, you know what, we can actually come up to this one too. So this probably is like 115, because 130 is probably here, 145. This is probably 1245. So <clears throat> what I'm saying is it's probably about a half hour in between here, here and here. So one half an hour. So the change in position is from 200 to 300 miles, so 100 miles over a half an hour. And if we play around with that, we get 200 miles per hour. Uh, how could the distance from the plane to the airport remain unchanged from 145? Oh, it looks like it's probably earlier than that. Um, until 230. Okay, uh, without the plane falling, how could a distance remain unchanged? Well, let's think about it. If here's an airport, and your plane has to circle your airport, its distance is always the same. So you might think about that, like the plane's coming in for landing, it's got to, you know, it's got to wait um, for some other planes to land or something on the ground to um, to move out of the way of the runway.